So for this video, I'm going to be deploying Grafana, really simple monitoring application, on my Kubernetes cluster in order to wrap up my head around persistent volumes, persistent volume claims, and persistent storage in Kubernetes. Because we run into the problem with containers, if we don't mount the storage within the container somewhere outside of the container, then when the container fails, we lose all of our data. So for this video, I'm going to be using Grafana. This is easy to deploy. It meets all the needs uh, for the video. Uh, we can quickly and easily go over persistent volume claims and persistent volumes. And if you haven't yet, uh, you can check out my uh, Kubernetes home lab on Raspberry Pi series. There's a video on how to set up an NFS server and create exports, which I'm also going to utilize in this video. So you can see here on the left, I have my Kubernetes cluster. And on the right, I have my management server which also hosts my NFS server, so my cat etsy exports. I'm only exporting KH data right now. But what I'm going to do for the purposes of this video, I'm not doing dynamic storage class provisioning. That's a whole other video. Um, but we're going to do mounting with NFS. So on my NFS server, I first need to uh, export the directory wherever I want to have the data in Grafana mounted. If we go to the Grafana deployment, and I'll put the link in the description, uh, the very base one, right? They're going to mount var lib Grafana as a persistent volume within our persistent volume claim. So wherever we want var lib Grafana to go, we need to ensure that on the NFS server, uh, we have an export available for var lib Grafana to mount. So in this example, I could have var lib Grafana mount to mount k data, right? Um, or, and that will be defined in the persistent volume that we define, right? So if, when I create a persistent volume, I would create it as k mount k data. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to create a separate uh, directory and export that called Grafana. So I'm going to go ahead and make directory Grafana uh, in the root here. Easy enough, so we have Grafana. And then important, uh, we need to, based on Grafana documentation, we need to make the UID, so FS group 472 for security context, right? And then Grafana also says the UID is 472. So unless I make for you, you know, for user UID 472, group ID 472, uh, the owners of the Grafana directory, um, the container will never deploy because it won't have permissions to mount there. So I'm going to chone uh, 472, 472 Grafana. And now we can see 472. So now the container should have permissions, it should have no problem. Uh, and then I need, oh. and then I needed to edit my Etsy exports on the NFS server so I can export that directory. You don't have to do this. You can mount it wherever you want. I'm just trying to keep everything uh, organized. Right, sync. Okay. And then we will go ahead and export FS A. Cool. And then FS. And now I'm exporting slash Grafana. So now slash Grafana is ready for persistent volume claims to take place within the Kubernetes cluster. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, I'm going to go ahead and real quick create a uh, namespace, kubectl create namespace Grafana. And that's where I'm going to uh, deploy the Grafana deployment. I'm going to, I'm going to create a Grafana.yaml file. And I'm going to go to the official documentation here. I'm just going to grab this entire thing here. And then we're going to go paste that. All right. So before we go any further, kind of we kind of have to go over what a persistent volume and what a persistent volume claim is and how they differ. All right. So if we take a look at this first diagram here, we have what's called a persistent volume. And that is not actually included in the default Grafana deployment that we just copied and pasted. We have to create that ourselves. And persistent volume. As you can see by the picture, it's available to the entire cluster. Um, that's why it's in the box for cluster. 
persistent volume, you define the kind persistent volume, you give it a name, and you say, here's how much storage I would like this persistent volume to make available to the cluster, right? So if it were NFS and you wanted to make uh, 100 gigabytes available to the entire cluster, so multiple applications could make uh, multiple different claims on that volume, uh, you would define 100 gigabytes, and then for the persistent volume claims, you would give one app 20, another app 20, another app 20, and so on. And then for NFS, there is a server IP you have to define, and then a path, similar to if you were uh, trying to mount an NFS client to an NFS server. So we can see the path Grafana that we created uh, on the NFS server. And uh, in this example, I'm going to provision, I'm going to make 20 gigabits of NFS server volume available to the entire cluster. So if we look at this next picture, we have a persistent volume claim. Now this is defined per application, per deployment. So it is not available to the entire cluster. So we make storage available to the entire cluster via persistent volume, whether that be NFS or Amazon S3. And then per application, we say, out of that chunk of persistent volume storage, I would like to claim so much storage of it. So for this example, Grafana would like to claim one gigabyte of storage from the persistent volume available to the cluster. So we, we say we want to claim storage. And then if we look at this uh, last picture here, this is actually in the spec deployment for the application container. Uh, we say we want volume mount paths, right? So within the container, we want varlib Grafana to mount to the Grafana uh, persistent volume. And then we define our volumes and we define the persistent volume that we would like to use in the cluster. And we would say we want to use this persistent volume claim that we've created as well to map. And that's how we map persistent volume claim to persistent volume. We do that in the spec section of the container deployment. So if we take a look at what we copied and pasted for Grafana from the official site, we have a persistent volume claim and we have a container spec. But we don't have is a persistent volume. So if you go to the official Kubernetes documentation website, uh, you can get the syntax uh, for, you can get this syntax for a persistent volume creation. And you can go ahead and uh, make it your own. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and take mine up here that I've pre-written and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it at the top of the Grafana deployment here. So when I deploy this, I'm gonna create a persistent volume for the that will be available to the entire cluster, not just this deployment, even though I'm creating it with this deployment. I'm gonna say I want to have uh, 20 gigabytes of NFS, of the NFS server storage available as a persistent volume to the cluster. Here's the server, the path I would like to make available as 20 gigabytes of storage. And then persistent volume claim. Uh, for Grafana, how much storage would you like to claim from that persistent volume? And then of course we map it all together down here in the container spec. So Grafana persistent volume. And then we, we have a claim that we would like to make. So then once you've got the persistent volume pasted in here, and you've defined your server and your path, you want to make sure uh, access mode is read write many for the persistent volume and the persistent volume claim. There's different access modes, but if you have read write many, it ensures that you can access and read and write this persistent volume and per persistent volume claim uh, from any node in the cluster. And the other two access modes are read write once and uh, read only many. So then we're going to go ahead and we're going to save this and then we're going to uh, kubectl, we're going to deploy this, uh, and we're going to put in the Grafana namespace that we created. And now all of our resources are being created. So if I do kubectl, get pods dash and Grafana, and then we're going to use the right flag. Uh, we can see it's running. It's not ready yet. 
if we do group CTO get, let's start at the top, right? Because we need a persistent volume to make a claim for the container to mount for the pod to mount its directory in the persistent volume. So we'll do a kubectl get pv namespace grafana. And we can see it has a status of bound. So our 20 gigabytes are bound to grafana. The claim belongs to grafana, grafana pvc. And then we can do kubectl get pvc. So going down the hierarchy here, uh, namespace grafana. And we can see that our persistent volume claim is bound to the Grafana persistent volume using 20 gigabytes of storage. And then we'll do a kubectl get pods again, because it should be up by now. And it's running. So now, if I come to my NF server, NFS server on the right, you should see var the Grafana. And we do. So var lib grafana, we don't see var lib grafana, but if we go to grafana, var lib grafana in the container, this is its contents and they are mounted here uh, on the NFS server. So if this container were to get shut down and be replaced with another one, it would use the data from the NFS server over here on the right. Uh, that way it's persistent across all the, and you can have all the containers, all the pods uh, for Grafana. If you have, re, if you know, if you have replicas, uh, you have multiple containers, they can all use the same directory to read and write to as, as a source of truth for the data. So the data is persistent and it's never lost.